On 882 6PR, this is Peter Bell. Six past one. Uh, it is my uh, great pleasure to introduce to you all Drew Bellamy. Drew is the Secretary of the Buddhist Society of WA. Good afternoon, Drew. Good afternoon, Peter. It's great to have you here. And uh, look, we'll explain and talk about your role with the Buddhist Society of WA and what uh, Buddhism means to you and what the state of affairs is here in Western Australia and Australia, not to mention the big convention coming up. But I thought nice and early I'd throw it open to everyone uh, who's listening. If you've ever had a question about Buddhism, about uh, how uh, you might become a Buddhist, for example, or what is important uh, in uh, in the religion, uh, well, you can ring now, and Drew will do his best to answer your questions, queries. 922 is the number, of course. Uh, now, Drew, yourself, how did you find your way to Buddhism? In the early days when I was a child, uh, like many Perth-born people, I watched a show called uh, Monkey Magic, a, really? uh, a Japanese uh, character show which was um, uh, a Zen-type Buddhist program. Mm. And um, I guess I didn't think much of it at the time when I was a child and I went to a regular Catholic school. Uh, and then um, about 2005, through the workplace, I was doing a training program and one of the programs, they ran a meditation session for stress reduction. Yep. And um, there was just something about it that, that I really liked. And uh, a few years after that, I came across Buddhism, I guess, because... Uh, uh, they're seen, I suppose, as the experts in, in meditation, and um, I wanted to further that practice and continue reducing stress. So, Before 2005, would you describe yourself as having been spiritual or religious? No, I, gu I guess um, after high school, I went to school with the Maris Brothers uh, in Newman College up in Churchlands, mm -hmm. and after high school, I, I joined the Navy and sort of travelled the world, uh, and I guess I lost any interest in, in religion or spirituality, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until I came into my late 20s, early 30s that uh, I started asking the big questions, I suppose, and around about that time, I came across meditation, and then so Buddhism was a natural progression. Now, w one thing that uh, uh, I fall into the trap of doing regularly, that is stereotyping, uh, when you walked in, when I was, was told that I'm going to be speaking with Drew Bellamy, Secretary of the Buddhist Society of WA, I didn't expect you dressed in a suit, a uh, business suit, uh, having been to Newman College in, uh, 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 well, in, in the western suburbs of Perth. What was the reaction within your friends, family, when you said, this is really resonating with me, uh, I want to pursue it further. Um, similar to yours, Peter. I, I guess most people said, "Oh, well, what's what's Buddhism? What, is, what does that mean? Um, you know, is that like Hinduism or, or Islam?" And it's not. It's it's very different. Uh, and then I guess people see uh, better changes in your in your behaviour, and mm -hmm. um, they become comfortable about about what it is. And certainly, the Buddhists don't uh, force their religion on anyone, or we don't try and preach or get people on board. The, the Buddhist practice is about what's happening inside of you. Mm. Um, so really it's just slipped into my life quietly and um, no one really says anything. Well, my question was going to be uh, what what do I need to do if I wanted to become uh, a Buddhist, but we might as well use you because you've been through the process. So it started out about meditation and then in the pro uh, and just jump in if I'm getting any of this wrong. And in the process of um, uh, the meditation, you were introduced to some other uh, Buddhist ideas, I guess, and they really resonated with you? Yeah, that's right. So I started attending um, the Buddhist Society Centre in Nolamara up on Nansen Way on a, on a Friday night. Mm. They have um, a half hour, uh, two, three hundred people meditation led by a monastic, and then they usually have an hour talk, so, sort of a Dharma what, talk. On what do you mean monastic and then Dharma? Sorry to interrupt. Oh, sorry. So a monastic is, is a monk, so a male okay. monk. So typically the monks in our tradition um, wear the orange, the orange yep. robes, and we also have nuns, and they wear the brown robes. And um, they'll on Friday nights, they'll lead a, a public meditation and then a talk on general Buddhist principles. So I was originally going for the meditation t to further my practice because it was working for me in reducing stress mm -hmm. and making me a little bit happier in life. And then you stick around the center and you start hearing some of the teachings and um, they're quite profound and, and you know you take it as, de as deep as you want, I guess. What sort of people were attending in Nolamara then on those Friday nights? A broad cross-section? It's, it's a mixed bag. There's um, quite a few people who come from Buddhist cultures, so places like Sri Lanka, Burma, Thailand, um, Cambodia, they have a strong presence. But I'd say Nolamara at the moment, we have about or easily 50 to 60 percent white Australians, mm -hmm. if you want to call them that, um, anywhere from 18 to uh, retirees. And um, they're all at sort of different levels of practice and people people come and go. Um, it's, it's not a discipline where 
every week you've got to turn up and bow and pray and, and this sort of thing. Buddhism almost regards itself more as a philosophy, I, I would say. Um, and it's light. It's very light on ritual and ceremony. Okay. Uh, I might ask you about that philosophy in just a little while, but I'm fascinated, as most people might be, with the, the role of the, the monk, the monastic. Is that the right, the right way to monastic, put it? The monastic, that's correct. The monastic. Uh, so what is the role? Uh, and how do you become a monk? So the monks, um, they generally spend a year as what they call an anagarika, which is someone who wears the white robe, and it's like an apprenticeship to see if they would uh, consider being or be, be able to be a monk. And then after that, they take their vows. So then as a monk, um, they're celibate, they're not drinking, um, they give up work, they give up money, they can't handle money anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also then have community, once they get the practice to a certain level, they have community engagement. So our monks, um, they go out and work in the prisons, they do visits to the hospitals, to the, to the cancer clinics. So... Um, the, the monks live, uh, I guess, a secluded life. We're from the Thera There's three main traditions. There's Theravada, um, which is India, Sri Lanka, Burma, Thailand. Yeah. Um, there's the Mahayana, which is like the Zen tradition of, J of Japan, which people will be familiar with. And the third one, of course, is the Tibetan tradition, the, the Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. So we come from the first one, which is the early, the early tradition. And um, those monks... Um, they spend a lot of time in the forest. They spend a lot of time meditating. They only eat uh, twice a day, once at dawn and then um, before midday, and then they can't eat anymore. And in fact, they can't actually prepare their own foods. They're reliant on supporters coming to them uh, with food every day and, and feeding them. Uh, and then in return for that, um, it's a nice relationship where the monks give guidance in regards right. to meditation and spirituality. Any kinds of food or does it have to be a particular type of food that you're bringing? Uh, any, any type of food's fine. Th there is a... a perception i suppose that buddhists are vegetarian mm. but it's not actually true uh the buddha wasn't a vegetarian um he would just eat whatever whatever was he he was offered to him at the time we're with uh, drew bellamy secretary of the buddhist society of wa if you ever had a question about buddhism uh, you might be interested uh, by all means join us uh, we're having a, a very broad conversation about uh, buddhism nine double two double one eight eighty two uh so how would you assess uh, well i'm gonna call it the scene here in perth i know that's the totally wrong way to put it but how would you assess uh, the faith here in perth so we seem to be going through a very uh, strong growth period and um, Buddhism is now Australia's largest religion after Christianity. Wow. So from the census, we can say that 2.5% uh, of the population are practicing Buddhists. Uh, so this is greater than uh, Hindu and Islam um, and Judaism. Uh, our numbers have increased 48% since 2001. And so that equals a total of about 530,000 practicing Buddhists in why, Australia. Why is it growing quickly? Just because of the stress in life and, uh, and that's, that's starting off people's interest and develop from there? I think so. I think because pe typically at, at Nolamara, at our city centre, people will come on a Friday night and they'll, and they'll do some meditation. They'll say, oh, this is for me and I'd like to know more about it. Mm. And then they keep coming. Probably in the broader picture, I guess there's a bit of a gap now in spirituality um, as the Catholic Church is sort of receding a, a little bit with its attendance numbers and um, you know, life still goes on and people still look for answers. Does Buddhism have a view with, uh, we talk a lot now of things like uh, mental health and, and depression. Uh, these matters are so prevalent in society, in the community. Does Buddhism have a view on that or is it all sort of dealt with through the uh, introspection, through the mindfulness, um, through the community, I guess? Well, it, it, Buddhism uh, is, is, when it's called a philosophy, I guess it's because it's a philosophy of the mind mm. and um, two and a half thousand years ago, um, there was talk of consciousness and, and mindfulness and basically, you know, with your, with your mind, you create your world uh, and in regards to conditions like, like depression and uh, other illnesses, uh, eventually they can be brought back to, to the mind because the mind is, uh, I guess, the precursor of the environment that you're, that you're operating in, in regards to the way that you treat other people, the way that you treat yourself. Drew, when you talked about the different sort of uh, uh, strains of, of Buddhism, how do they interact? How do they engage? Uh, are they very much still interacting within the wider framework or do, do, sort of, do you leave one to do their thing and you guys do your thing? They all stem from um, the same beliefs, I suppose, mm. uh, the same um, uh, suttas or scriptures or, or writings from 2,500 years ago. Uh, but just over time, they've slightly diverged. Basically, we're all the best of friends. There's right. no... There's no conflict in Buddhism. You won't find one sect of Buddhism atta attacking the other. Um, one misconception people have is that the Dalai Lama is sort of the chief of Buddhism in the world, but th that's incorrect. He's the, he's the chief of um, the Tibetan sect.
Okay. Uh, what about the depiction in uh, popular culture in movies? I can. I think we can all think of a few movies and those sorts of things. Do Do you get upset with the, the stereotypes or depictions, or do you think uh, it's all a bit? It's harmless, and uh, or is it is it an accurate depiction? Ah, oh, I mean, it depends on what stereotypes you're talking about, but broadly. Buddhists don't really get upset about too much. Right. Uh, we just go and do a bit of meditation and, uh, you know, if, so, if someone wants to say something silly, well, they can say something mm. silly and, you know, that's the end of it. I'm trying to think of, uh, like, the, the Eddie Murphy movie, The Golden Child, I think. <laughs> I mean, for example, I mean, is that disrespectful? I mean, it's, I find it funny, but is it disrespectful? <laughs> no, not really. Not really. We, okay. I mean, we just don't get worked up about, yeah. about things like that um, because it's not about – the books or the mo- or the robes of the monks. It's about the teachings, and and that's that's the thing we focus on. Okay, yeah, uh, we're with Drew Bellamy, secretary of the Buddhist Society of WA. Time for a couple of your calls, which uh, should be really interesting. Brian is in Queens. G'day, Brian. Yeah, g'day, Peter. Far away. Uh, just a bit of a query. I, I'm sort of in touching on um, Buddhism just through a book I picked up one day, and I was sort of uh, to me and the, and the way the book was presented, it was. They sort of definitely said it wasn't a religion. It was more like a uh, striving for awareness um, and just uh, you know how to how to live your life more than that. What, what was the? But I just heard. You know, uh, I only just got on the radio, but I just heard him talk about being a religion. That's yeah, well, right. that was probably me, to be honest, uh, Brian, talking about religion. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure Drew would like to respond. Thanks for the call, Brian. Uh, the truth is that um, Buddhism is, is a very strong philosophy, and in Australia, we're a religion for tax purposes. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's the straightforward answer, Brian. Okay, I've just realised I'm going to set up my uh, beer drinking religion soon. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for tax purposes, of course. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Kathleen's in Duncraig. Oh, thank you for taking my call. Um, I, I just would like to say to the gentleman there, I taught myself meditation um, years ago, um, probably 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, with, I did it with medita- with um, Steve Halpern's music, and um, my children also meditated, and and my middle daughter had her f- child with no anal- analgesic or anything. She just meditated through the whole process. Um, when things get really bad here in Perth, and I get pretty low, mm-hmm. um, I go up to the monastery in Jaredale. Um, and you find it very beneficial, Kathleen? Oh, oh, it's just, it's my, it's the most wonderful place in the world. Oh, fantastic, it, Kathleen. I, I have to leave it there because we, uh, we are running a little bit late. Really appreciate your call, and that's some uh, good, uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, feedback from uh, Kathleen out there. We're with Drew Bellamy, Secretary of the Buddhist Society of WA. If you have a question, 92211882. You're spending your afternoon with Peter Bell. It's 23 past one, and we're lucky enough to have Drew Bellamy, Secretary of the Buddhist Society of WA. Drew, tell us about the big uh, convention that's coming up, because I believe there's a number of international uh, speakers as well as uh, uh, local, of course. That's right, Peter. So we've got the uh, we're hosting the ninth global conference on Buddhism, and the theme is uh, resolving conflict with mindfulness. It's um, running on the eighth and 9th of August at the Perth Convention Centre, and uh, we have many, many speakers, uh, over 20 speakers including uh, a British professor of mathematics, an astrologist, uh, an expert in psychic medium, a variety of senior monks from around the world, Mm. uh, a very famous hypnotist called uh, Dennis Shepard, who resides in Perth, and he does um, past life recalls. We're having a Tibetan movie star, uh, we're having Father Bob, the Catholic priest, and we're having a Catalan cyborg who hears colours through sound by having electronic implants in his brain. <laughs> okay, all right. So it's, it's very broad. It's not just uh, Buddhism broad. per se. It, it, very broad, uh, exploring different areas of uh, interest and spirituality. And that's right. So all those people are bringing in their their different uh, views and where, where Buddhism is going in the future, where humanity is going in the future, where we're going to be in in a hundred years time. Mm. Um, a one day ticket, one hundred and sixty five dollars. Uh, full registration, three eighty. That includes uh, two fully catered lunches um, and speakers all throughout the day. Uh, you can buy your tickets online at. Uh, uh, www.bswa.org, our um, website, yep. or um, www.9gcb.org, or you can um, just Google 
the society, Buddhist Society WA website and find our contact details there and ring us, come down, go on the internet, buy tickets. Or if you have a question now, you can ring us, 922 uh, We're with Drew Bellamy, Secretary of the Buddhist Society of WA. I've got a question for you, Drew, and it involves meditation. Uh, so take us through uh, how much meditation, for example, you would do in your average week. Right, so I, I meditate daily and uh, at different strokes for different folks. I tend to find that my best meditation uh, is about 40 minutes before bedtime, so about mm-hmm. 10 o'clock. I'll uh, retire to a quiet room in my house and I'll have some cushions set up and I'll close my eyes and um, focus on my breathing and focus right. on the breath coming in and out and basically over time bring uh, stillness into my mind and then go into a meditative state. Okay, so no, there's no music or anything like that on in the background to help you relax. This is complete no, silence. That's that's right, just silence. I okay. mean, there's always noise coming from outside, dogs and cars, but, yeah. but as you still the mind further and further, those noises drop away and uh, you're looking, I guess, for a, a peace, a little bit of refuge inside yourself at the end of the day. It sounds fantastic. Now, when I've tried to, uh, and look, I haven't tried my hardest, I have to be honest, but when I try and do that to really really uh, to, to, to try and go deeper, I guess. Um, I, I, for some reason, I keep thinking that I shouldn't be thinking about anything. Do you do you think about things when you're in that state or does that not mean you're meditating properly? Well, I, I guess there's no not meditating properly and it's just a, a question of persistence over time. But generally, you'll find that at, in the first five or ten minutes or so of your meditation, there's going to be lots of thoughts racing around your mind as you wind down from whatever you're doing during the day. And at, at, as you go deeper into the meditation, I guess the thoughts come at less frequency and um, less timing and then eventually you'll find that there's gaps between the thoughts and and the idea is uh, the piece is those gaps between the thoughts and as you become skilled, you can really have long, long periods Mm. without thinking but there is no problem uh, if you're trying to meditate and you've got thoughts going through your mind, you just just allow it to still down all on its own. Are you a poor Buddhist if you miss a meditation session or how do you feel if you, for whatever reason, don't get your chance to meditate um, on a daily basis? You're not a poor <laughs> you're not a poor Buddhist if if you miss a meditation and certainly if you've got kids and family and jobs, it, it can be hard and some members, they may just meditate uh, a few times a week when they've mm. got a quiet time, especially got young children they're putting to bed. Um, it's good to have a daily practice. If you don't have a daily practice, that's okay as well. And many people approach Buddhism uh, not only through meditation, but they may approach it through what we call perhaps the wisdom factor. So they read about Buddhism. Um, they're a bit more social in the scene and talking to monastics. Uh, me- meditation's the yanka, but uh, if, if it's not working for you right now, you just – Persist at it and over time, let it come naturally and gradually. Uh, Are there any other guiding principles that you can enlighten us about or or lifestyle is probably not the right word or there's some expectations? Sure. The Buddhists have um, what they call the five precepts or the five practices. So these are different from, let's say, the Ten Commandments, which is a very heavy word. Mm. Um, And and they would be, the five precepts would be no killing, no stealing, uh, no lying, no adultery and um, no intoxication through drugs and alcohol. Mm-hmm. And and basically, you just try as best as you can over time to, to, to not do those things. And if you make a mistake every now and then, that's okay. Because one thing that Buddhists don't do is guilt. There's no guilt. Oh, I've done the wrong thing, mm. beat myself up about it. Just learn from your mistake, move on, try not to do it again. Do drugs include, uh, uh, this could be a stupid question, uh, caffeine, uh, Panadol, oh, painkillers? No. So you're talk- we're talking... Harder sort of heroin, stuff. Okay. methamphetamine. Right. So, so it's, you're not expected to give up caffeine, for example, or not take a Panadol if you've got a headache, that sort of thing. No, no, okay. not at all. No. Do we have any local Perth monks uh, born and bred here in Western Australia, pursuing Buddhism, and then have become monks? Sure. So down at um, Serpentine, at the at the monastery there, we've got about uh, thirty monks, and the abbot is a very famous monk called um, Ajahn Brahm, and he had over one point three million. Uh, downloads of his talks last year right. from our website. Um, he has over two million YouTube viewers per year listening to his Friday night talks. And as as of today, I think he's in Thailand or Indonesia on tour. Okay. He has quite a few international tours. He's British born, but he's been here since uh, the 1980s. Um, we have another monk, Ajahn Sajato. So sorry, Ajahn means uh, teacher, right? And uh, venerable means entry level monk. Um, so Ajahn Sajato. Uh, as far as I know, he was born in Applecross, 
and um, he did a bit of philosophy at uni, played in a rock band, uh, <laughs> then he became a Buddhist monk, and then he went to Sydney and set up a monastery there and was the abbot of a monastery in Sydney, and he's since, um, after 10 years, left that and come back and come back to Perth for a while. So of the 30 monks in Bodhnyana, uh, I can't be quoted exactly, but I, th- I think it's about 20% local born, um, and... As Buddhism gains more traction in Australia, we're getting more more local uh, males and females wanting to become monastics. Okay. Do you want to just quickly go through, just talk about growing in Australia? I mean, how many practising Buddhists there are right now in, in Australia? Well, we mentioned before that um, according to the census, there's 530,000 yeah, people okay. in, in Australia professing uh, Buddhism. I, I guess they may not all turn up at the same time at Friday night in Olamara. Mm. If they did, we'd have a problem <laughs> with parking. Um, so there's, there's quite a few. And in fact, we've got a public meditation uh, on the public holiday coming up, mm. uh, 1st of June, I think it is. Uh, the Fremantle Council has kindly let us uh, use the Esplanade and... Um, We'll be having a meditation there led by a monastic. So um, if you're in Fremantle on, uh, at 2 p.m. on the public holiday, uh, come on down. Drew Bellamy, uh, Secretary of the Buddhist Society of WA, where would you be without Buddhism, do you think? I think that I'd be a, a bit more stressed out mm. with my work. Uh, so I'm, I'm a businessman yep. and um, my life's pretty busy. Definitely the daily meditation, I guess, and the spiritual practice has, has reduced the stress level. And probably over time as I've begun to follow the five precepts and the other guidelines with Buddhism uh, a little bit stronger, uh, it's kept me out of trouble in daily life. Uh, this is a very personal question. You don't have to answer it. If you're looking for relationships, uh, are you hoping or is it a, almost a, not a condition but are you looking uh, within buddhism or can you can different sort of lifestyles mix different lifestyles can uh, definitely mix in buddhism because uh we don't discriminate or we discriminate against all people equally um so <laughs> <laughs> i can tell you that um i was married and in fact i was married to a muslim lady um, and we had a, a relationship that worked for um, quite a few years. Mm-hmm. So, in, yeah, in Buddhism, it, it doesn't really matter what, you, what your partner is. I guess as long as they're fairly ethical and not yes. taking you down the wrong path with yeah. drugs or whatever. Fascinating. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, really appreciate it. If you leave that information, I might give it one more read in the last hour about the convention that's coming up. But really appreciate your time, Drew. Thank you very much, Peter. There's Drew Bellamy, Secretary of the Buddhist Society of WA. Thanks to those uh, people that called in as well.